exciting battles, iconic moments, huge prizes, and of course, championship glory. All that and more are why we love competitive Clash Royale. Hello and welcome to Three Crowns, your home for all information on competitive and esports in the Clash Royale scene. I'm Rich Slayton, as always, my friend Andrew Guy with me, and of course, we'll be joined by world champion coach for Team Liquid, Eric Benamu, and two-time Clash Royale League champion, Joshua Ah Crap Sharon, to bring you all the most important information about CR esports. That's right. That's why we're here, Rich. Here at Three Crown, we're going to break down everything you guys need to know about the esports scene, talking to personalities, talking about the meta, how you qualify for the next tournament, and of course, who has already qualified for World Finals. It's been a long road getting here, starting in 2016 with the Crown Duel, from there to CCGS, multiple years of Clash Royale League all throughout the world, and now the most open version of CRL ever here in 2022. For more information on how you can participate and what it's all about. Andrew, take us away. As you may have seen on the Royale Esports website, new year, new format. But what does it mean? What is a golden ticket and how do you get to World Finals? In August, there will be, and I quote, one big six week in-game event with a never before seen format here at CRL. At the end of this event, all players qualified will join those golden ticket holders in our 2022 World Finals lineup. The best part is, you don't have to wait as long as you have in previous years. This in-game event will start in August, which means World Finals will be right around the corner in September from the 23rd to the 25th. Back to you, Rich. Thanks a lot, Andrew. Clash Royale League 2022 is already underway, and we gave away our first golden ticket at the Bren Chong Cup, Bernard Chong Cup, Golden Edition, 32,000 players entered, but only one gets a direct trip to CRL World Finals. Let's take a look at the action. The action was fast and furious, and what better way to kick off that action than with two of the greatest players to ever touch the game, defending world champion Moogie up against Morton. And Moogie's playing bait against one of the best bait players of all time, way in the lead, but check out this play on the left-hand side as the cannon cart sneaks right on by and gets a huge connection, minor, to add a bit more to it. And just like that, Morton, Pulls the rug out from under Moogie. Moogie can't believe it. Morton with the sly smile. This was a great comeback by one of the all-time greats in the game. And speaking of all-time greats, what is CRL without Mohamed Light playing defense here against Samuel Basoto? This is about as good as this defense against Cannon Cart Graveyard can get. You're going to see the Cannon Cart connect here for a few hundred damage. But really, overall, beautiful defense by Mohamed Light to mitigate what could have been an absolutely difficult disastrous moment. But the story, of course, Samuel Basoto against Lucas X Gamer. They ended up playing BO3s twice. This is the winner's bracket. Finally, you see Lucas just slightly ahead. Samuel takes that lead back with the EQ plus log. But of course, the trade here opposite direction. And now Lucas in the lead with 10 seconds to go. Samuel tries to get past the Archer Queen and the guards can't do it. And that's going to be a razor thin win here in game number one of their first match. But Lucas, you see the stress on his face. He knows what's on the line. 57 HP, the difference. That was game number one. Game number two of the same matchup. What an unbelievable exchange this was. A beautiful King Tower activation on one side by Lucas going up against that Mega Knight play opposite direction. Samuel with a nice defense against the minor plus bats play with that Magic Archer. And he sets up the opposite direction here in sudden death overtime. Mega Knight plus Royal Ghost, Magic Archer down, Ram Rider down. And that Ram Rider going to slide on over, but a nice fireball redirect nearly saves the day. But man, just too much on the board. And the Bandit is the hero here. Sneaks right past the Miner and steals that win for Samuel Bisoto. GG, well played for Sam. This was an absolute beauty. And then this was the end here, the grand final. Samuel with one game in hand. Lucas has to wave the white flag. He knows it's all game over. And look at Samuel Basoto's face. He just won $20,000. And of course, a trip to Clash Royale League World Finals, courtesy of that golden ticket. Celebrate all you want, young man. This is a crowning achievement for a long time, one of the top players in the game. But this is that one that goes right on the wall. Big time win 
for the man out of Brazil. Congratulations, Seba Basoto, and congrats to all of our podium winners. 20,000 to Seba Basoto, 10,000 to Lucas X Gamer, and 6,000 to SK's Morgan. Now, Seba Basoto is going to World Finals, and maybe you can too. There are plenty of more chances to make it to CRL World Finals this year. Many more golden tickets out there, but two of them come up this month will be on the line first. Taking a look at the Queso Cup Golden Edition, things kick off with an in-game tournament on April 11th that you can play in $50,000 prize pool alongside that golden ticket. Then starting April 22nd, open qualifiers for the ESL Snapdragon Pro Series, 60 k and a golden ticket on the line for EU, Middle East, and North African players. If you are in North America, there's also a $20,000 series concurrently happening there for you as well. Go to esports.clashrail.com for more information on all of those. Now, and I know that just like me, you might need some help doing that. So let's go ahead to our resident Clash Royale expert, two-time CR Regional Champion, Joshua AC Sharon for some deck help for your CRL journey. Wow, those events look super cool. I can't wait to see what happens. For those of you who are looking to compete, there's going to be a new champion, new meta, all sorts of new decks. What does that mean? You might need some help. Let's take a look at some of the decks that I think could bring you that golden ticket. Deck number one, it hasn't changed from the last meta, Hog EQ AQ. Archer Queen, still powerful. Hog, still powerful. EQ, still deadly. The pump buff means that EQ got even stronger this meta. You are down 1200 HP, what do you do? Any other deck, you panic. Hog cycle, you're good. You just cycle the hogs, you cycle the earthquakes late in game, they can't stop you, the constant pressure is too much, you're gonna be taking towers and cannon plus skellies plus fire spirit, that's a solid defense. They're not getting past you unless they do something crazy. Deck number two, we have three musketeers pump. Pump buff is huge. Not only does it force out spells to allow your three musketeers to, to, to prosper, but let's say they use fireball first, you know, second play of the game, you've already used your pump. What do you do? Golden Knight in the back, three musketeers bridge. They're actually not stopping you. One of the most powerful, you know, combo plays. This, this reminds me of 2016 Clash Royale. You stick the heal spirit in though, that's the addition. And then it doesn't matter if they have Valk, your three musketeers plus golden knight plus heal spirit, nothing stopping you. You are taking that tower 45 seconds in, they're gonna start the emote cries and for good reason, they've lost the game. Deck number three, we have Giant Skeleton, RG, Mirror? Yes, sir, we have the Mirror as well. It is so powerful. The synergy between those three cards, the Fisherman, the Hunter, the Zappies, you know, you're really not getting past this. As long as you don't overextend, you're fine. Late game, double RG, Earthquake, you know, single RG, double Giant Skeleton to protect it, Earthquake. Single giant skeleton, single RG, earthquake, double earthquake. It doesn't matter. There's so many different opportunities to set up that right push. Once you have it locked in, lasered in, focused in, you're taking a tower. Whoa, buddy. I'm pretty sure you did not mention the Mighty Miner. And I did it for a reason. I wanted this to just be personal. I think the Mighty Miner is going to be fun. Uh, I'm going to mess around with it all the time in Three Musketeers decks. I think there's a lot of creativity. You know, the the card itself is going to be a blast to use. I don't know how viable it's going to be. I don't know what you're going to be able to swap it in. That's for you to figure out yourself and then, you know, help me out. But anyways, that's enough for the decks. That's enough for, you know, my time right here. Let's bring it back to Rich and Andrew. Thanks a lot, Josh, for breaking down all those decks for us. Hopefully you watching at home have a better shot now at getting a golden ticket. Uh, Andrew, I mean, he just said that he thinks the Mighty Miner isn't even maybe not viable competitively yet or leaves it up to you guys at home. Uh, thoughts from you so far? You know, I think it's such an interesting, unique, and versatile card. It's It's been barely out for just a few days now. So thinking about that, I bet we're still going to find where it fully fits into the meta. I think there's probably decks out there we haven't even thought of yet that it could really work with. I mean, obviously, AC is a little better at Clash than I am, and he's probably able to break it down a little better than me. But I'm still thinking it's going to be viable for a bit just because of its ability to switch lanes. You never know what you can do with that counter push. And also the fact that we now have a four elixir card that can just burn through those big beefy units. You know what? I was going to say, let's just bring him back on here. We can talk to him about it. And he, maybe he can tell us why he thinks it's not viable. At least tell Josh, me. Josh, Josh, <laughs> welcome back. Uh, we're putting you on the spot here, but you oh. called out, you're going to run Mighty Miner in three Musketeers decks. 
I guess. But this is the this is the new champion. Um, I mean, is this a it, like it's a minor? Does it go with Loon at all? Does it is it a with that big burn? Does it go with Freeze? You're you're talking three Musketeers. Anything else on this card for us? You know, uh, the reason, uh, man, it's it's tough, right? It's tough. I I had plenty of time to uh, rehearse what I was gonna say, and I just couldn't think of anything because it's a difficult card. Like the concept is so new, so fresh. There's so many ideas with it. Which is why my brain went straight to Three Musketeers. What would be the most fun? What would be the most fascinating deck? You know, and that's what it came to. I think that we could see it in Loon. I think that we could see it with uh, Drill, perhaps. We could see it with Wallbreaker Cycle. There's there's decks that we can use. I like Split Lane Pressure decks as the main way to set up the... Uh, the new minor card. Josh, quick question. You know, when, when the Skeleton King first came out, people were saying that it wasn't that good, and they were saying that it's incredibly high skill cap to learn how to use that card. But then as we move through the meta, now people are saying it's a really low skill cap card. You basically just hit that ability anytime you're at 50% or above and you have the elixir. With this interesting ability on the new champion, do you think that this two elixir is well worth? Do you think that it's a good use of that elixir in terms of the bomb that drops? Let's see. I, I know for a fact the two elixir can be great because I saw a Twitter video and then, you know, someone dropped a rocket and he was able to escape. So there's plenty of times where it's going to work. Now, overall, I don't know. It, it might be the champion that we see its ability be used the least amount of times. And so that'll be interesting to see just how important that part of the card is. That's gonna be interesting. You talk about dodging spells. That's I hadn't even thought about that yet. Man, I'm so excited to see it get into the mix <laughs> yeah. with players who are way better than I am. Speaking of players way better than I am, uh, it's Josh's former teammate uh, in, in CRO with Teams for Space Station Gaming, one of the all-time ladder greats on the planet. Mentioned it earlier in the show, but winning the Bren Chong Cup Golden Edition, that first golden ticket, uh, Andrew, Josh, the three of us were all together casting that event. Uh, uh, Josh, we'll, we'll start with you. This is your friend who you've you've been a teammate with for a long time, who maybe has, has besides his great ladder performance as a competitive, has never really had that super duper shining hang out on the wall moment. Now he has a golden ticket, the shiniest thing possible to hang on that wall. Talk to me about the importance of this win for Sam. Yeah, man, I'm just so proud of him. The only thing I don't like is that me and Nick, AKA the God RF, we texted him at the same time. He did respond to Nick first. So I was kind of upset about that, but <laughs> overall super happy for him. I mean, it must mean the world to him. I know how hard he's been working, how hard he's been trying to get to that next step. He's never involved in the S tier conversation. It's always Lucas, it's always Muhammad Light, always Viper. And so the fact that he got this, especially month one, that has to be so important for him. Uh, Andrew, we, we saw some of their big name stars there. Of course, that final, that final four was so insanely stacked with some names he just mentioned. Uh, Moogie, uh, Muhammad Light, uh, Lucas was there at the end. Uh, Morton getting very, very far in this one. Who do you think had the, uh, the most impressive showing out of the non- golden ticket winners in our event. I'm so glad you asked me this question because I'm going to speak frankly here when I know that the community and, and even myself, I won't speak for you guys, I was just wondering what this final eight would look like at the beginning of the year. You know, it's a new format. There's 32,000 people joining in through all these tournaments. But when you come down to our final eight, it shows that the proof is in the pudding, right? There's so many big names there, the best players in the world. I wasn't that surprised to see them up there. And it made me feel like, you know what? This is really working. Performances that stood out to me, you know, Morton is a guy that I love to talk about. The first thing that I noticed with him, and it's crazy to hear me say this, and people were giving me, you know, a hard time on stream, but I, I, to kind of dull it down to what I could really put it as one thing, I think he needs to clean up the beginning half of his five minutes. That's one thing I've noticed with Morton is because he can always play from behind. He can always come back from these crazy deficits. If he could clean up that first two minutes, two and a half minutes, I think we're talking about another golden ticket winner. The other guy that really stood out to me, Moogie, it's felt like he kind of found his footing halfway through the day. You know, our uh, defending world champion, I think he's going to be better next month. And then Lucas. Lucas was so clean. He was so good. It really was about the two beasts from Brazil. He was the big standout for me. I honestly thought he was going to take the whole entire thing. 
until he ran into Basoto. And maybe I was just sleeping on Basoto because it felt like he wasn't there mentally at the top of the show because of that repeated card. But man, he proved me wrong and, and then some. Josh, final question. This is the hard one to put you in the hot seat here. We had some contenders for the golden ticket. Same with Basoto, of course, taking it. Who is your front runner pick out of the guys remaining to get that next golden ticket? Oh, uh, man. Uh, I think I have to cheat and just say Lucas. I, it's the easiest answer. Um, he was special the entire tournament. He went six and one in phase three, and he only lost to Morton because he was using some giants or it was some sparky hog deck. So his dominance over the past month has been, you know, nothing short of special. Um, and really it came down to who won that first best of three or, you know, that first set between him and Samuel, that was going to be the decider overall. The only thing I don't want to see from him, he has to stop using Golem. All these players in general have to stop using Golem. I saw that way too much. And, you know, if he cleans that up, I can see him winning it easily next month. Well, no Golem, no complaints for me. Uh, thanks a lot, Josh. We'll have to see you back. See you back here to find out what actually happens in our next event for a golden ticket. That's it for today's show. Really hope you enjoyed it. Of course, we'll be back with more information and news on Clash Royale competitive esports. That's right. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Turn on those notifications. Ring that bell so you know every single time we go live. And of course, follow along on Twitter so you know every community tournament that's run and how you can join. For Andrew Guy, Joshua AC Sharon, Eric Benamu, I'm Rich Slayton. We'll see you next time right here on Three Crowns.